Thank also you. on XM, uh, as we go over there, I am really psyched today. Uh, I think at like 10 or something here, uh, or, or in an hour from now, Danny DeVito is calling in. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. The great Danny DeVito. I'm really the psyched. The Danny DeVito. Yes. Jimmy's getting prepared for the Danny it's DeVito good. phone call. Just a couple of thoughts. Oh. I love, love. Taxi. It's this, It's embarrassingly funny. It's mm-hmm. It's like... It's sickening how good that show is. You know, when I can't sleep and I get up a little earlier than my alarm, it's on before the local news, and, uh, I, and I sit through it every morning. He's just fucking made every moment he was in funny. It was um, it was mind bending how good he was. I think Andy there. Kaufman may have taken away from how great he was in that uh, series. Kaufman was funny, but I mean, the I, whole cast except for uh, Jeff Conway, right, or, or the original John in the first season. Wait, I who thought. Is it? Ah, see, a lot of people don't remember John. He was the oh. Chuck from Happy Days. Yeah, there was another driver that Wait, kind of disappeared. The Chuck that no, not did... the same guy, but I'm saying the same thing where he's same just gone type all of a sudden. Situation where there was a guy, a character, uh, another driver, and then he just kind of disappeared. And they didn't first. replace him. No, it didn't Holy replace him. Holy shit! I had no idea, him. and I love yeah. Taxi. First, first season. season? Yeah. Yep, and he was married. He had a wife, and she was a character. Who played that? Do not remember. Never saw him again. Oof. Probably just killed himself. They just realized Jesus. the audience hated this guy, and they just said goodbye. I just think they couldn't find any niche for him. Like any, any, you had. Uh, I mean, at least Bobby Wheeler was the actor, and Tony Danza was was great as the fighter. I mean, they all had a thing, but this guy was just kind of a schlub. And you know, Judd Hirsch. What are you gonna be a better schlub than Judd Hirsch? <laughs> Fucking what a cast. Ugh. Oh wow, Danny DeVito's calling in. So all right, I'm no, he's not. Not yet. I don't see. Uh, he's not calling for a while. I don't see that. Who told, yeah. who told you he's not going to worry about that? How long a while, Finn? Uh, Somebody better imitate Danny DeVito to save my ass. I know a comic named Danny DeVito. He spells it, it's well spelled D E V I D O. Right. And he actually had to change it to Danny Vermont. <laughs> so, um, uh, <laughs> fucking, you know, because he couldn't. Yeah. It sucks. Ah, Danny's on the phone, though. I, you know, I big, don't see that line. Hollywood that line is not in. even. All right. Uh, hey, Danny. That line isn't even, uh, yeah. Danny? No. You'll see it light up, uh, and you'll see Danny DeVito, uh, the name. All right. We have to make a pact oh, that right dead. now. Okay, I won't ban him. <laughs> how long do we wait for Danny DeVito? Give him a few minutes after 11. Yeah, because... No, uh, I want an exact time, because I know how this plays out. 11.10. I have a decorator to see uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> I say 11... We're shock jocks, dude. Shocking. And it's shocking that I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. That's the shocking part. I'm starting to think it might not be. You're turning, it, you're turning into metro jocks. Metro jocks. Metro jocks. I say I, 11, 10. I, uh, yeah. I say 11. I'll say 11, 07. I say no show. 11 o'clock. No, I say 11, 10. Well, how about, Jimmy, you just sit around? I would. To interview Danny DeVito, I would. You sit around, take phone calls. Yeah, talk You're going to be him. very disappointed. I'll wait, but I'll, he'll I, call I'm going to give, give you I told you so's. Guarantee he'll call him. Doesn't the publicist realize we leave at 11 officially? So can we find out when he's calling, if it's confirmed? Ben says it is, and he'll call at 11 or a moment or two after. He's Danny DeVito. This I is not just some schlub. calling him. Can't call a man like Danny DeVito like that. He'll call. We're not just wasting time. We're having fun with a capital F. I'm going to ask some good questions, too. How does it feel to be uh, an actor? <laughs> what do you do with your hands? I'm I'll answer that, that. Tom. I'm sure he hasn't seen Lucky Louie. Oh, she can bet I'll toss that in. You know, just two men of the same ilk discussing something. Of two uh, sitcom legends. <laughs> I, too, will wait for Danny DeVito to call. I think it's going to be worth it. How often do we get a guy like that in... Voted by never. TV Guide, the fucking best sitcom character ever. And we will never get him. We will. <clears throat> I think you're I think you're being a naysayer. The man got up late. It happens. Nay, nay. I was supposed to call in a few times into the show, and I'm a member of it, and I would oversleep when I was in L.A. Right? Remember, guys? We would talk? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it happens. Hmm. Line 11. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> and it's... Who is it? Who is it? Let's go to it. It's... Who is it? No? No. Someone effing with us. Who's on line 11? Travis, what do you know? What do you know, Travis? Come on in here. 
barely, door barely has to crash. Uh, Roland's talking to someone right now. I don't know. Uh, is she? Someone with Danny DeVito. I oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, that's all. Ro- okay. Roland's probably prepping him. All right, get yeah. Roland in here. Right. Well, Roland's talking. He's going to be on in two minutes. He's calling right back. There you go. Oh. The pub says call saying he's calling, so he's, they're getting ready for him. Two minutes. All two right. minutes. Two minutes. It's 11 o'clock. You do realize that. I told you before 11.10. We go home at 11. You do realize that. I don't care if people are paying. Show them. What? <laughs> line eight. Danny Bovito. Did you see Danny the back of it, though? Bovito. Uh, no. Two minutes. I'd like one. It's now uh, past two minutes. We look no, really it's not. silly. This was scheduled for... And 10, by the way... 10 o'clock. That's what I see. Danny DeVito, phoner, 10 a.m. Okay, it is now 11 a.m. And, um, yeah. Working on getting me a computer from the other place. Well, that'll be nice. End of you. August. End of <laughs> August? <laughs> Why so I long? don't know. I don't know. I just want to be loved. I don't see the... Um, what questions are you going to ask Danny ring. DeVito? We gotta yeah, give us a little we thing stretch. here. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I don't know. What are you talking about? All I want to do is praise How about him. Uh, uh, War of the Roses? Dude, his role in War of the Roses. Uh, he's pivotal. been in some amazing, pivotal. amazing films. It's just amazing, is right. The guy's hilarious. An amazing actor. What's the What's the new show? Uh, it's called It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's on uh, FX right. Thursdays. All right. At night at ten o'clock. Do we have an update on uh, Danny DeVito? We're in I, bonus I heard, time. I heard Opie that uh, on the bowl. Like a minute and forty five seconds ago. I heard uh, that it was going to be two minutes. Right. All right. <clears throat> he produced Pulp Fiction. Really? Yeah. We gotta, we gotta ask him some Pulp produced Fiction questions. Pulp yeah, he produced uh, obviously Pulp Fiction. All right. He produced uh, Get Shorty, Aaron Brockovich. I mean, you know, this could be one of our bigger interviews. Produce Danny DeVito. Yeah, it's right. right up there with uh, Richard Dreyfuss, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Look, look at is his he resume. up? Does he? Does he? Is he at Richard Dreyfuss level though? Danny Real. DeVito. Yeah. Yeah, man, he's in Cuckoo's Nest. He's fucking Louie from Taxi. I mean, Dreyfus is Dreyfus, but it, it, film-wise. But look at the movies he's been in. Twins, Throw Mama from the Train. Ah, twins. Twins. Wow. Who did I play in Twins? Give me my name. Uh, Phil Connor. Phil Connor. Was that Arnold's name in that or no? Uh, it's Groundhog Day. Oh. It's the only, it's the only fake Arnold. name I know. Oh. <clears throat> well. Yeah, of course. I told you guys. All right, you got him. He's there. Mm-hmm. Where? One second. Eleven. One second. I know if Travis hits the wrong button, he's fired. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Danny DeVito. Hey. What's going on, Danny? Hey, I'll be an Anthony. How that is you, Danny DeVito. What's happening, you guys? It is confirmed. Danny DeVito is calling I into am. our show. We were worried you weren't going to call in. We're very happy you really? did. We're a little yeah. gun shy with uh, oh, big God. stars. Oh yeah. Because well, uh, seeing this is uh, you know two o'clock, four o'clock in the morning where I am. Where are, are you, the Philippines? <laughs> I'm only kidding. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know, I had to get up early to do it. It is early though. You guys, I'd do anything. You probably. Oh, thank you, Mister Danny. Danny, can I ask you a, a, an honest question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Do you even know who we are? I haven't to fuck you. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> That's what we like. Right, we like Some the honesty. honesty. We like the honesty. I prefer a lie. No. Like, yeah, you guys are great. I'm a fan. Yeah, you guys are great. Because this poor guy, you got a whole list of people you got to call today, you and you got to make believe you're friends with all of them, right? You got that that ring to your voice, you know? Oh, That's yeah, it sounds good. familiar. That friendly ring. I think I worked with you before. Yeah. Some, you must yeah. know Jimmy Norton, star oh, of uh, HBO's Lucky Louie. Of course. Oh, he doesn't know. <laughs> Finally. Thank God he doesn't know. I would be so pissed if Danny DeVito knew Jimmy. Because occasionally people come in, uh, big celebrities. Well, not, not big. You know, middle of the line guys. And, and they know Jimmy. They turn around and go, oh, I've seen your stand-up. Or, oh, I saw you on uh, Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn or something. Yeah. And and it pisses me off because Jimmy. I then you were kidding me. No, I'm a comic. My name is Jim Norton, and occasionally somebody very famous will know who I am. But it's normally not somebody I love, like yourself. That's usually the rule. If I love somebody, they've never heard of me or seen me. 
What made you want to go back to uh, to TV? I mean, you got such a great film career. I mean, obviously, yeah, I got well, all this stuff going and everything. But the, the idea is, is uh, it's always sunny. Is uh, uh, you know, it's like uh, written by these young, uh, talented uh, people, and it's very, very edgy. And I saw the first season. They did a season seven seven shows, and I thought it was really. Um, it was really terrific. It had like, you know, themes they took on like crazy ass stuff that they started doing. And then when, uh, Landgraf, who was uh, the head of the company there, he said, you know, they were thinking of adding a character. I said, well, maybe, you know, I'd, I'd give it a, a, a think, a think, a little, you know, try. If the character is, uh, you know, uh, kind of organic and, uh, and has, uh, an edge that doesn't seem tacked on. So they went out and they, they wrote 10 shows and they actually pitched me a, a really good idea and then I and I said yeah and then they wrote these wonderful 10 shows and I play uh, the father of two of the people on there and it's like getting up in the morning you know how you get up in the morning you really want to go to work that kind of thing you're looking for that I, I remember that I had it many many times yeah I know you don't have it now but I mean like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I remember that you know man you know lots and lots of shows uh, movies uh, that I do, that that happened and and I have this same feeling now with this. It's always sunny. You get there and there's always fresh, funny kind of things uh, do, uh, you're, that you're doing. Like my sisters live in Jersey. They live down on shore and they're a little older than I am. And they always watch my career and they go and they, you know I can always tell what's going on with them. You know they go like they call me after they saw this first show and they went ah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so that... you, so you're on television again. Again, yeah. that Jersey yeah, honesty. Yeah, make sure you're on television again. Uh, like the first but, time uh, was nothing. It's, it's, it's not like the first show. This, oh. this show is like, uh, you know, uh, you were uh, talking about cripples. <laughs> I said, well, Inch, like the thing about it is, uh, like the guy got hit by a car. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, the guy got hit by a car, and then... Uh, you know, he had to be put in a wheelchair. He had broke his legs. And we took him to a strip bar so that he could have some fun. But we noticed that all the girls were going around him. So we decided to go go get wheelchair. wheelchairs <laughs> and come back into the bar <laughs> and get some women. And uh, so, you know, it, it's a show for a lot of people, but not for like my seventy-five-year-old sister. You obviously, I mean, look, you you were voted. I mean, when you, for for obviously as Louis De Palma. I mean, you were, it was T. The guy voted your best sitcom character in history. Yes. Uh, and and I obviously there are things that you guys tackled in that show. Uh, one of my favorite moments ever is you remember when you drove Zena's girlfriend home. And yeah. she was on pills, so you, you open mouth kissed her and then wound up sleeping with her. It's like a date rape. <laughs> the fucking, and then the next morning she sobers up and she goes, were you taller? And she, and he realizes that she's sobering up. He goes, do you want more pills? I'll get you pills. <laughs> you could not get away with that. It, it's amazing, the, the content stuff. And, and I always thought Louie was so great. Um, yeah. And I haven't seen this new character because even, even as great as Carol O'Connor was, or, or, yeah. or Hawkeye Pierce, but Louie, you, the way you did it is like you were not only funny and vicious, but really obviously like lonely and wounded, and I think that's what yeah. made people love you so much. Yeah, I think you, you're, you're going to really respond to this character, Frank. I've, I've done 10 episodes every Thursday night. What I do is I go, it's like that ritual, you know, now that you got a show on the air. I go watch it at Thursday night, and I really hold it up, uh, you know, I really look at it under a fine-tooth comb, and I feel that this stuff is really, really pumping right up to the level of where I, we were in Taxi. It's like not you can't go back again. Right. But it's it's got this kind of uh, edgy new kind of quality to it that is, uh, and also you get to do a lot more things on FX than you were able. Well, that's to true. Do. Yeah. You got a lot more freedom over there. You got a little bit more freedom. Yeah. And you know. And the more popular push, the show gets, the more freedom yeah, you seem to get over there. You get. Yeah. You push the envelope a little bit, and you have, you know, you have some uh, racy fun. What's uh, what what's some of the differences though between uh, back then uh, uh, um, taping well, a TV show and now? We're shooting uh, this on. Uh, this is a show that was. I don't know if you know the history of the show was put on by these guys. Uh, 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 Rob McElhaney, Glenn Howerton, Charlie Day, and this uh, woman, Caitlin Olson. She's adorable. She's a. Uh, she plays my daughter. 
uh, uh, unfortunately, I won't get the banger. And, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you never know where next season could take you. <laughs> you never know. Uh, but uh, the the uh, you know the 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 shows the difference is they you know they did a pilot they did their their own pilot for like uh, like a hundred dollars or something uh, just with the tape cost Jesus. and then they, they sold it to FX like wow. two years ago. And so they're they're innovative, like they're a, a story in themselves. Just the fact that they got this on the air, and then the first season was like really good, very good writing, and they put it all together themselves. And then then now uh, now the second season has really come up even in a couple of notches, and uh, uh, we go, we shoot on DV, you know, digital video, digital video, and we and we uh, you know it's very you don't see a dolly track ever. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about just technically differences. You don't see the big bulky cameras. We shoot with two, sometimes three cameras. We shoot in uh, environments. We go, go to. We have a bar. We have a. We have a. You know, office. We have a thing. We have a outside. We go on the street. So it's a lot so, different than the traditional. It's a lot different uh, than the traditional uh, way yep. we shot. You know, uh, a taxi where it was confined to the stage with the audience and the stuff, which is not. I'm not poo pooing that. I'm just saying that. You know, in the world we live in today, uh, those uh, those other uh, those technologies that have been uh, discovered to be really uh, very valuable are being put to use. You know, and it's uh, it's freedom. It, it gives you more freedom. Do you laugh? Do you laugh when you watch yourself attack on I, taxi? I, 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 I do I do? You when you I get, when, I get a kick out of myself. Remember the episode? That, I mean, obviously I, this is annoying fan questions, but there was an episode where you guys went back to where you were before you became who you are, yeah. and you were talking to the old dispatcher, and you said your wife's peach slop gives me the trots. You've said some of the funniest things in the history of television. It was just so yeah. brutal when yeah. when the relative died, and she you said how, and she told you when, and you said I said how, you old bat. <laughs> it was unapologetic. Apologetic <laughs> and just that's what television is. There was, there was everything yeah. about Louis should not have been likable, and yet it was the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Now he's a rare. How you pull that off? Yep. Martini yeah. and Cuckoo's Nest. I mean, your resume. I, oh my god. I'm a stand up, great. and I do a little bit of acting, and I want to just blow my brains out when I look at your resume. It's like you have done so many yeah, brilliant gotta, things. You just got to keep doing what you do. That's the thing. I uh, bet a dime. No, I bet a dime. No, no, and you tried to bet a nickel. You broke the cigarette, and you just wouldn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really happy that you're you're, you're back uh, uh, doing a show like this, Thank man. You. Thank and, you. I'm really happy. Yeah. To when be there. when can we see this? It's, it's uh, every Thursday at ten o'clock. Yeah. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. All right. On FX with Danny Thank DeVito, busy man, Danny DeVito. They're telling us now uh, we gotta let you go. Thank you Thank for all the all the, the great moments in the last man. It's, it's really it's an honor to talk to you today. Beautiful man. And good luck with the show. Thank you. All right, Danny DeVito. All right. Thanks. Take bye care, bye. Danny. Nice speaking with you. You too, buddy. There he goes. Look at that. Ah, Danny nice DeVito. Guy. You got to talk to Danny DeVito. And he's nice. Yeah. Jimmy, you did a great job. Yeah. Um, do we, you know how close? Well, I got it. This is Greg Hughes, the actor that plays Opie and, oh, and Anthony. Oh, ladies show. and gentlemen. And it's Greg there, Hughes. There are times I get a very bad uh, uh, rap that I'm an asshole. Uh -huh. I did write this down, and I showed it to Anthony. Can you, you show me? You you did see that I was trying to get something going with Anthony, right? I didn't. I uh, you started looking over here because I was. I read it. Oh, I read it and agreed wholeheartedly. He by gave the way. a thumbs up, and then I got to be honest. This is uh, Greg Hughes showing I have a heart. I couldn't, couldn't do, it do it on little Jimmy. Let me Norton. see. It. Read what that says at the bottom of that page, okay. written in Opie's hand in ink. Oh, bottom right corner. No, you can't. What does it say? I got a what does it say? Huge laugh. You would have been pissed. End of show. What does it say? Hanging up on Danny. <laughs> Hanging up on Danny DeVito. I was going to give the big intro. This is how it's going to play out in my head. And then I just couldn't do it. I was like, Danny DeVito, everybody, the star of blah, blah, blah. Danny, you're, uh, you're, you're late calling. Yeah, well, well, the show's over. We got to go home. Good day, sir. Click. Which would have, yeah, which would have, first, I, I, let, let me, Jimmy might have cried. The I panic ripples in uh, the office, because we would have ruined our relationship yeah. with the publicist. Jimmy would have, yeah, just been so pissed off. 
He would have stormed out of the studio. <laughs> but it would have been worth it. It would have been, been worth it. I know it would have been worth it. Here's why it would have been a bad move. I think because the guy has done, he's contributed so much. He's fucking, he's been so great. You got it. You got to yeah. be respect the guy. You got it. You can't do it. He hit it up when you said, "Be like, be honest. Do uh, do you know who we are?" And he was like, "No idea." And, and he was, was funny and he was, was nice good. and he laughed yeah. at the taxi stuff. He wasn't. A, he was great, man. Yeah, and he wasn't that late. That yes. was the problem I had. Too. No, damn it. it. Only an hour. It felt a little too forced. <laughs> Only an and, hour. And late. he was a nice guy, and he was fucking Louis De Palma. You got to cut up Wife's black. peach slop gives me the trot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun way to end the show. Holy that shit. That was great. All I wanted to All do right. was quote his own lines to him. I know, and he liked it. All day. Dude. You would have just been that guy. You want pills? I'll get you more pills. Oh, it's great. Uh, you need to play Jimmy's cock gobbling sound for Danny. That's good. Jimmy sounded just like Chris Farley. We know the. the I fun. know. I'm a dumb fan. And by the way, I've I've declared that bringing up the Chris Farley bit is now worse than the Chris Farley bit. If you bring up like, hey, you know, you sound like the Chris Farley. Remember when Chris Farley did the bit about you know, and he had Paul McCartney on. Set? Whoever brings that up anymore now sounds like the Chris Farley bit. And thank you, Roland, for making this interview happen. I think it was Roland, right? Yes. Good boy, oh, Roland. Okay. He's an what, animal, what Roland. Is?